Hi, my name is Alyssa and today I will be covering the pass or fail or credit or no credit grading system. So my objective for today is to help you understand what the pass and fail credit or no credit grading system actually is and to help you understand why we should use this system rather than the traditional A through F 10 point system. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, approximately 2.2 million children in 2016 aged 12 to 17 have reported having at least one major depressive episode within the 2016 school year. Now you may be looking at me going, why does this have any relevance to my topic? However, this presents a major issue. There are several reasons as to why teens are at a much higher risk for depression, such as relationships, bullying, and peer pressure. However, the main stress factor among students is academic pressure. The pressure of maintaining a perfect or even passing GPA along with high test scores can cause several mental health disorders such as anxiety, depression, and many more. The mental health of students is greatly affected by the traditional point-based grading system, which is why I am here today to persuade you of the pass or fail grading system, which allows for more inclusivity and allows the less fortunate to thrive academically. And I'll begin by informing you of the psychological effects that grades can have on students. According to a 2015 study done by APA.org, approximately 42% of college students state that they have had at least one depressive episode because of their obsession over their grades. In society today, the amount of pressure that is being placed on both high school students and college students is enormous and it is growing day by day and it can sometimes be just simply too much to handle. Not to mention the pressure from peers, parents, and teachers to succeed. Depression and anxiety presented as a result of school can affect relationships both professional and personal and work productivity as well. One study conducted by APA.org as well found that nearly 4.29 million people would have graduated from college if the amount of pressure that they had experienced was less. Next, I will explain how school systems set students up for academic failure. The traditional grading system in Nevada is based on a 10-point increment scale, going from an A, which is 100, to 90, um, a B, which is 89 to 90, a C, which is 79 to 70, excuse me, and so on. Majority of students tend to fail because they feel as though they are digging themselves into a deeper hole that they can no longer get out of. Several students miss these assignments that are assigned to them and their classmates that have really strict deadlines, and teachers sometimes can fail to consider issues that students may face. This can include a loss of a family member, no access to the internet, family issues, and the list goes on and on. Yes, it is no secret that there are students who genuinely do not have a care in the world about whether they pass or not. However, this does not speak for all students. And this all leads me to my next point, which presents a solution to this issue. So the pass or fail or credit or no credit educational system is fairly simple. The system will expect students to meet the standards of the presented material. However, now that those students who felt less intelligent than others or who were genuinely just bad test takers overall can now relax and actually feel welcomed in a learning environment rather than pressured to getting that A. According to edsource.org, colleges such as the California State University and the University of California have both agreed on the pass or fail credit or no credit grading system as of April 2020. Um, and other colleges such as Prescott College, Brown University, Hampshire College, and many more are now doing the same. Students across these campuses have reported feeling happier and state that they have more flexibility when it comes to their grades. And additionally, approximately 79.8% of students say that they have developed more respect for their education. Ditching traditional letter grades will reduce stress levels among students, the competition among students, and it will also level the playing fields for students who are less advantaged. Removing letter grades can encourage teens and young children and children of all ages to explore their knowledge and to take ownership of their learning. It is safe to say that a majority of schools still use letter grades to today, but this is also ineffective for young children. Children as young as four years old receive progress reports and report cards that are given to their parents to show their level of academic success in the classroom. However, this does not accurately reflect that child's learning. According to the National Center for Learning Disabilities, an estimated one in five children in the U.S. have learning and um, attention issues that prevent them from being able to succeed academically.
Um, because of the academic pressure of those with learning disorders who are not succeeding in the classroom, the dropout rate among students with learning disorders is approximately 18.1%. Now, it is also important to keep in mind that the dropout rate for students as a whole and students that do not have learning disorders is only 6.5%. That is nearly three times the amount for students with learning disorders. This only further goes to show that students with learning disorders also struggle in a classroom that goes off of letter grades and it is difficult for them to succeed academically. At this point in my speech, are you still sticking with letter grades? Well, next I will provide a list of cons to letter grades to exactly pinpoint how harmful they are. Con number one is that letter grades create an adverse risk behavior that ultimately leads to challenging behaviors such as cheating. According to academicintegrity.org, an estimated 65% of students have admitted to cheating on a test. Approximately 58% of students have admitted to plagiarism and approximately 95% of students said that they have participated in some form of cheating, whether that be plagiarism on a test or on a homework assignment. Now, if these percentages really do not alarm you, then something is seriously wrong with our educational system. Con number two is that grades have ultimately become the end goal for many students. Almost every student and teacher know that whenever new material is presented, one of the most common questions ever asked is, will this be on a test? Now, this question shows that students are really only concerned with being prepared for a test that will either drop or raise their grade. Information is often um, crammed into a few late night study sessions the night before the test and then forgotten immediately after the student received the grade that they were satisfied with. And this only goes to show that students only learn information for a test and they are not actually interested in retaining the information and learning from the information. Con number three is that grades are an inadequate way of measuring students' academic success. Now, there is no limit in qualitative learning, which allows for students to go beyond the requirement, beyond the passing point, to deepen their knowledge. With letter grades, however, uh, students perceive that passing grade as just a stopping point and that it's kind of a limit to their education. And this sort of signals a stop to their learning because they receive that the, the grade that they wanted. Con number four is that there is an immense amount of competition between students over grades and academic achievements. Now, it also affects the student-teacher relationship, and this is something that people don't really think about. Now, this is seen a lot in movies where people talk about teachers' pets or people get made fun of for being liked by the teacher. And oftentimes, that golden student or that teacher's pet is the one who has the highest grade in the class. Now, uh, teachers often treat those with an A much better than they do those who have maybe a C or a D or are struggling in the class and don't have that perfect grade. Now, this also goes back to the point that not everyone has the same learning method, which is why those who are poor test takers tend to have a difficult time in school today. So today, I discussed uh, the negative effects that letter grades have on students mentally, um, how school systems have failed students academically, the multiple cons to letter grades, uh, how letter grades affect students with learning disabilities, and how the pass and fail grading system works and how it can benefit students. From the information presented today, it is clear that a pass fail or credit or no credit educational system provides a much better learning experience for students and their peers as well. I know firsthand how difficult it is to feel successful in school when you are trying to maintain passing grades, specifically straight A's and high test scores. I know that this is something that I would completely love and it would allow for people who don't feel as welcome in the school environment to feel more in included in the educational environment. So overall, I hope that this speech helps shape your idea on the traditional grading system and has left you with something to think about. Thank you.